Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh and today I wanted to pop on here and give you all a quick update about what is going on in our little house of Toyotas. Not that I think any of you are on the edge of your seats waiting for a new video to drop or anything like that, but I wanted to do this video because of a video I did about a month ago in which I told you that we were going to be buying a TX 550H Plus plug-in hybrid. Plans have changed. We are no longer going to be pursuing that car. We have already talked to our dealer and taken ourselves off the list. We will still be buying, though, a new car from Lexus, and it's actually going to be happening a lot sooner than anticipated. And by sooner, I mean in the next couple of weeks, we will be trading in the NX and picking up something else from Lexus that I am beside myself with excitement about. I'm not going to tell you exactly in this video what it is, though... Any of you out there who know the current Lexus portfolio and based on everything I say, we'll probably be able to figure out pretty easily what we are getting by the time you're done with this video. But um, while we still have the NX, I wanted to do one last video, tell you why we're not buying the TX, and then share some parting thoughts about the NX. Um, and I'm going to split that up into two sections. The first being what's making it really hard to part with the NX, and then the second being what's making it really easy to part with the NX. So what am I not going to miss? So let's get into why we're not buying the TX. Now, if you watched my original video about the TX, you could probably tell how excited I was about that car. And I am still really, really excited about it as a car and as an idea, I'll say. I think that the combination, again, of that 2GR engine with the plug-in hybrid drivetrain is going to be brilliant. However, I got to see the new Grand Highlander recently at one our local auto show, and it is huge, you guys. Now, I knew it was going to be big to begin with because that's the whole point of that car, but until I saw it in person, I didn't fully realize just how big it was, and I really feel like that, that and the new TX should be classified as full-size SUVs because it is almost as big, if not actually as big, as a Sequoia, as a Tahoe, as an Expedition. It is massive. And again, for some people, that's going to be a home run because that is the size of car that they need. For myself, we don't have any kids, and so I just don't need anything that big. I was willing to put up with the size of it and you know deal with it, to have that powertrain, but after seeing the Grand Highlander in person, I just don't think it's worth the burden of having a car that big to get that drivetrain. And so once we decided that the TX was once and for all out of the picture, then we started to look at what else is out there because we had already mentally committed to buying a new car. We had set aside the money that we were going to be spending on that TX. And so we had a we had room to kind of look at and maybe think about something else. And if you are familiar with the Lexus portfolio, there are a number of cars on their side, especially of the Toyota brand that are going to be going away in the next one to two years full stop. And when they do, they're going to be taking away their amazing engines, the amazing old school Lexus interior with real wood trim and all that kind of great stuff that you can still get on a few select uh, Lexus vehicles in 2023. And we decided on one of them. It's a car I've been wanting for literally years on end. So super excited to finally be getting that, which is truly one of my dream cars. Um, and again, so excited to share that with you at some point here in the near future. Now, at this point, you might be asking, well, why trade the NX? Because it's brand new. We just bought it. It's an amazing car. We've only had it for six months. It's only got 3,700 miles on it. Why trade that? Why not trade one of the other cars? And the, the just truth of the matter is when we looked at our garage and all three cars that we currently own, it ended up being our least favorite. And I know that that sounds terrible, but you know the RAV4 Prime that we own is special. It was made in Japan. They're impossible to get even still. And when we looked at the 4Runner and its value, it is worth more today at four years old and 14,000 miles than it was new, than I paid for it brand new in 2019. It is insane how well that truck has held onto its value. And it, that value is going to continue to skyrocket, especially once the V6 goes away. And I really don't know, to be honest with you, if the 4Runner is even going to be sticking around because I don't understand and see a way for a 4Runner and a Land Cruiser Prado to exist in the Toyota line. And we already know that the Land Cruiser Prado is coming to the United States. And Toyota's been putting out some questionable, if you will, posts about the 4Runner. There was one the other day where they said, chasing sunsets. Well, if you work in you know, any kind of industry that revolves around product, sunset is a nice word for retire or discontinue. So I don't know if that's what that is suggesting. I'll actually, I'll be, I'll be really, really sad if the 4Runner goes away. 
but I'll be really happy that I still have mine. So long story long, when we thought about what's important to us in a car, what we value in cars, what we want in the long term, the NX kind of just came up with the shortest stick. And so it's going to be the one that gets the axe. But with all that said, I do truly love the NX. I have had this last six months of ownership has been amazing. I will truly miss that car. And let's now talk about why. What's making it really hard for me to part with the NX? What am I really going to miss? Now, I'm not going to get into a ton of detail in this video here on each of these points because I've gotten into them and talked at nauseum about them in all my other videos. Go check out my two review videos I've done on the NX. There's a RAV4 comparison. There's a bunch of stuff out there on my channel if you want more information about the car. So I'll just really quickly summarize these points for you. The first thing that I'm really gonna miss about the NX is its size and efficiency. It is so nice to have such a small and compact little SUV to you know roam around town in, to park in tight parking garages, to parallel park in city centers. So easy, so efficient. We have been able to get upwards of 38 miles to the gallon in our NX 350H, and that has been it's been amazing to have that kind of efficiency in a car. The car that we're getting, again, if you haven't figured it out by now what it is, is not, is like the polar opposite of the NX in every way possible. Efficiency and size being one of them. The car we're getting is probably gonna get half, if not less, in terms of efficiency and MPG than the NX gets. So that's gonna be a rude awakening, and I think the new car takes premium. So size efficiency to have such a premium little crossover that takes regular gas really really going to miss that on that note i'm also going to really miss the way the nx drives i've said in every video that i've done to date i think that the nx is just endlessly pleasant it is such a pleasant car to drive on a daily basis now it's not a fun car as I've said before, but for daily driving, for sitting in traffic, for just kind of roaming through downtown streets and all, so pleasant. It is such a nice place to do your daily driving, and I'm really going to miss that when we get rid of it as well. And finally, I am really going to miss the technology in the NX. The NX has amazing technology in it. Because it was released in 2022, it's got all the latest of everything. It's got the latest Lexus Safety Sense 3.0. It's got the latest infotainment system. It's got all the modern tech features like head-up display and digital rearview mirror and the best driving assist and rear emergency uh, automatic braking the thematic ambient lighting. There's so many things in the NX technology features that make it feel so modern and up to date. And there are a lot of cars out there that have really great technology, like a BMW and a Mercedes and uh, Range Rovers and the new uh, Uconnect 4 FCA technology, especially what's in like the new Grand Cherokee and the, the Wagoneer. Technology in there, cutting edge, lots of features, all kinds of gizmos and gadgets and everything that you would want out of a new car. But all four of those systems, to me, have felt a little bit glitchy. They still kind of feel like they're in beta mode. Um, the Lexus, on the other hand, incredibly solid, rock solid. I have had a few issues with some of the infotainment system things like the Apple Music and the internet connected features, but those are not mission critical. The things that are mission critical, rock solid, stable, work all the time, work beautifully. So yeah, great technology and honest to God, so, so much to love about the NX. It is such an amazing car, despite all the shit that I give it sometimes about some of its quirks and some of the things I think they could have done better or differently. It's such a great car. And there are probably things, honestly, off the top of my head that I can't even think of right now that I will realize only once I get into that new car and start driving it and will be like, you know what, I really miss you know, this, that, and the other about my NX. But I still think, as a whole, even with all that being said, that as an entire package, I would much rather have the new car than the NX. And with that, let's get into what's making it really easy to part with the NX and what I'm not going to miss about it. Now, the first thing that makes it really easy to part with the NX is the fact that because it's such a great car, okay, because it's so new, it is in such high demand right now that we can trade ours in without taking a huge loss on it at all. When I ran the numbers and really looked at what could we get for the NX, I was honestly shocked because it's not a specialty vehicle like a GR Corolla or a RAV4 Prime or my 4Runner TRD Pro. But the amount that we can get back, even though you do take a, most cars take a big hit, especially in their first six months of ownership. For some reason, 
whether it's Toyota's supply and demand issues, whether it's the demand for hybrids, whatever it is, we're going to walk away from that car with a without without really taking a big loss at all. So that makes it really easy to part with this car now. And I think it's the right time, given that the car we're getting is going out of production by the end of this year. Like now is the time to get rid of this to get that. And I'm really happy with the decision that we've made to do so. The second thing that's making it really easy to part with this car is a little bit controversial. So if during this section you're getting offended, feel free to click out, you know, tell me to F off and I'll see you later. That is totally fine by me. I <laughs> I totally understand that this may ruffle some people's feathers and rub folks the wrong way. But I really feel like over the last few years, Toyota and Lexus, but Lexus especially more so than Toyota, has fundamentally changed the ethos, the spirit and soul of Lexus has changed. Now, I am not old, but I'm old enough to remember when Lexus first came about in their, their genesis. Um, and at the time, and for many years after that, their tagline was the relentless pursuit of perfection. Then we lost the relentless part, but it was still pursuit of perfection. And their cars really reflected that for many, many years, for decades. We had the most amazing quality cars. We had cars that were meaningfully and substantially different than their Toyota counterparts. Lexus is always in their heyday and their golden age. They felt like true luxury cars. They had, you know, the most beautiful leather inside. They had beautiful wood trim. The way that the cars were crafted, it was like maybe three or four levels above what a Toyota of the same kind of, you know, like a Highlander and an RX. The, there was a meaningful difference between the product there. Now, when I look at the Lexuses that are coming out, so my NX being included in that, but also the new RX and the new GX and the new TX, I and a lot of others of you out there, I've gotten a number of comments that I agree with and that I think we all kind of feel the same way, that Lexus is no longer pursuing that perfection, if you will. There are a lot of things in my NX that make it feel like a Toyota. There are a lot of things in the new RX and the new GX and the new TX. When you look at the interiors of those cars, it's almost appalling how much plastic and just kind of, I don't know, there's just no joie de vivre. There's no, there's just none of that Lexus soul and spirit that you used to be able to get in an RX. Like when I drove, honestly, when I drove the 2022 RX 350, go watch that video <laughs> if you want to know more. That honestly was the, the straw that broke the camel's back to make me decide to go buy what we're going to be buying because I got in that car and was immediately taken back to the days when Lexus made those kind of incredible products. The cars that had real wood inside, the cars that had the utmost attention to detail, the materials inside, even though that RX had new Lux and our new car will have new Lux as well. It feels a cut above, two, three, four cuts above, honestly, the new Lex that's in my, my new NX. And when you look at the interior of the new GX, for example, just the sculptural design of the dashboard looks like a frickin' Tundra. I'm sorry, but the minute I saw that new GX come out, the first thing I thought was, okay, that looks like a Toyota, the outside of it. I mean, it's a br beautiful car. I love the look, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't, the Lexus badge does not belong on that. Same thing with the TX. I was going to buy the TX and I still am really excited about it. But the interior of that thing looks like a Grand Highlander. The seats are identical in the TX and the Grand Highlander. It's just a sea <laughs> of black plastic in the press photos. And the same thing is true, you know, even though I did buy my NX and I do love that car, I have said in almost every video that I've ever done, that I really do think that it's a, I don't consider it to be a true luxury car. And a lot of that comes down to the interior. It feels and looks like a Toyota. Nothing wrong with that. But for a, tr you know, a car that's supposed to be a true luxury car, like the RX, like the GX, like the TX, it's unacceptable. And so I'm really, really, again, happy that we're going to be getting one of the very last great true Lexuses that have come from the Pursuit of Perfection era. So really looking forward to that. And then finally, the last thing that's making it really easy to part with the NX and that I am not going to miss about it when it when we get rid of it is I don't really feel like the NX has a soul. 
I don't feel like it's a driver's car, which is, it's not because it's a hybrid. So it's supposed to be a driving appliance. It is, I mean, that's its mission in life. And I knew that going in from day one. And I'm acknowledging that because I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying, I was looking for an X3 when I bought the NX. Um, but for me, I really love the way that my 4Runner drives. It feels like it has a soul. It feels mechanical. My 4Runner has hydraulic power assisted steering. So there is a true connection, like a mechanical linkage between the driver, my hands and what I'm feeling through the wheel and the engine and the wheels. And there's just a lot of that that's missing in the NX. The NX is totally a one fingered driving experience. You can set your pinky finger on the steering wheel and drive that car around and not be involved in it at all. And as much as I do love that, again, for a daily driver, and it is so, so nice to let the car pretty much do its thing on the highway, I really miss and was getting a little bit panicky because of how few cars there are that still offer a very connected and involved feeling that when I thought about, again, the trade-offs of each, getting the car that we're going to be getting, which is going to drive very similarly to my 4Runner, that was what I wanted. So yeah, this probably wasn't brief. Um, none of my videos ever are, <laughs> and I really apologize for that. But that's what's going on. Those are my parting thoughts on the NX. Thank you guys so much if you watched all the way through this very rambly video. I really appreciate it. I will seriously miss the NX and, um, you know, genuinely will probably be complaining about the new car, but cannot wait for that new car to arrive. I will do a full reveal and tell you all about it once we have, you know, keys in hand and it's in the driveway and all that kind of thing. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching another video. Questions and comments, leave them downstairs. I will talk to you all real soon. Have a great one and take care.